Hello everybody and welcome back to another Doctor Who product review. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the latest complete season Blu-ray box set release, this time round from the Tom Baker Fourth Doctor era. It is of course the ending season from the Philip Hinchcliffe era of Doctor Who being season 14. Now this season does in fact do quite a lot within Doctor Who history, we see the departure of Sarah Jane Smith after having many years within the role, we have some rather iconic stories including the deadly assassin, the robots of death and of course the talons of Wang Chiang and of course we see the introduction of a brand new Doctor Who companion being of course Leela. I think it is fair to say that this one is highly regarded by Doctor Who fans and therefore it makes complete sense that this box set has in fact been highly fought after by fans as well. I do believe that this box set came around early May, something like that, and the vast majority of retailers have now sold out of this item. It's currently quite unclear if it has actually sold out due to popularity, or it has indeed sold out due to the current circumstances of COVID-19. Either way, if you haven't got the product as of yet, I hope you do manage to get one at some point in the future, possibly once non-essential shops manage to open once again. A few stores, say the likes of HMV, might get a few in store or something like that, but things Fingers crossed you will be able to get this product eventually. As per usual, the vast majority of retailers are selling this product for around £40 and naturally does contain all of the episodes from the season, including a massive amount of special features, some of which have been released on DVD and VHS before, and some of them are brand new and entirely exclusive to this release. As always, of course, the design itself has been created by Lee Binding and it looks absolutely gorgeous. When I heard that this set was originally going to be released early this year, I was incredibly excited because some of my personal all favourite Doctor Who stories are within this season and of course my favourite Doctor Who story of all time being the Talons of Wen Chiang is the closing story for this season therefore it makes for a perfect release for fans of the Philip Hinchcliffe era and people who like dark Doctor Who stories very much like myself. So, as always, this complete season box set does come packaged within a slipcase, meaning that all of your standard Blu-ray details are contained on this slipcase, and meaning that the actual packaging of the set itself remains rather minimalistic and simplistic. So, at the very front, we get the BBC and Doctor Who logo, along with the collection, season 14. This set is, in fact, a PG, rather surprisingly, and it is an 8-disc set. And on the side of the slipcase, it does once again repeat that this is season 14, as well as the BBC and PG rating. Flipping around now to take a look at the back of the slipcase, as per usual we have all the details that you come to expect, including an episode list for this season, as well as a list of the brand new special features and your standard Blu-ray details. As per usual, we have continued to build your Doctor Who archive with this Ultimate Collector's set. This box set does of course feature all 26 episodes, newly remastered and packed with bonus material, and those episodes do of course include The Mask of Mandragora, The Hand of Fear, The Deadly Assassin, The Face of Evil, The Robots of Death, and The Talons of Wang Chiang. For those of you with a little bit of self-control who have previously bought the other two entertain DVDs for all of these classic series stories, I quite rightfully think, well I've already purchased the episodes before, why do I need to do it again just for the sake of a pretty slipcase? Well, this is the box that tells you why, because we have all the brand new special features that are featured on this box set, which I will be taking a look at in more detail in a bit, but as you can see, as per usual, there is a great variety of different special features, including new documentaries and commentaries as well as brand new special effects and 5.1 surround sound. And of course all the initial special features from the original DVD or VHS releases have in fact been replicated on this release. At the very bottom it does state that this box set does star Tom Baker, Elizabeth Sladen and Louise Jameson, along with the featuring running time being 616 minutes approximately. Mmm, all of that Doctor Who, what is not to like? So now taking the product out of the slipcase, as per usual I do recommend keeping the slipcase, however I'm sure most of you will be doing that anyway. This does of course reveal the rather nice and textless cover art underneath, which is as stunning as ever. Once again Lee Binding has done an absolutely brilliant job of representing the unique costume that the Doctor does wear within one of the stories in this season, as well as depicting a number of the different monsters and villains that the Doctor does of course face. A really brilliant inclusion is normally behind the Doctor, we have your usual 
actual title sequence, very similar in fact to the one seen on season 12, because this box set does of course feature exactly the same title sequence to season 12. This time round, however, they've gone with a more artistic approach, and we do have instead the sewer walls from the Talons of Wang Chiang in the background as opposed to your usual time vortex, which I think is a really brilliant touch. I'm assuming that much like the vast majority of the main figures of the Doctor that are seen on the front of these box sets, that this one is probably a combination of many different images that have been put together, making for this rather brilliant and sharp image of the fourth Doctor from the talons of Wang Chiang, with of course the Deer Stalker hat at the very top as well, a wonderfully unique version of his costume. The great little inclusion is that the fourth Doctor is also holding the key from the talons of Wang Chiang to of course go in the time cabinet, and then of course as usual in the very middle we have a range of the different monsters and villains from this season including Magnus Greel, Eldrad from the Hand of Fear, the one and only Mandragora wearing his gold mask and of course the Vok robot. Now it's a really nice range of monsters, of course some very iconic ones in this season as well. I like the way that we have the vortex coming around the side and that red filter placed over the top of them, really nicely blending them into the rest of the costume and the overall colour palette of the cover art itself. The side of the box features the same layout to usual including the Blu-ray logo, a smaller version of the cover, as well as Doctor Who the Collection and a band that states that this is season 14. And of course, now flipping around to the back, we have your usual design with the TARDIS. However, what I absolutely love is the more that these box sets get released, the more experimental and exciting the artwork on the back of the box is. It's getting to the point where the artwork on the back of the box is just as exciting as the artwork on the front of the box, as we have the TARDIS depicted in lots of different ways to, of course, be relevant to a certain scene throughout this season. This time round, they've gone with a rather lovely 21st century reimagination of the Mandragora Helix from the opening episode of this season. So we have an absolutely brilliant TARDIS box here, I do believe created by CGI from Jonathan Pickard. And then we do also have some lovely crystal designs coming around the side, including of course these edges here. Very much like the front of the box set, I absolutely love how sharp and vibrant this cover art is. It definitely plummets classic series Doctor Who into the 21st century. And I imagine that this box set wouldn't look out of place alongside some of the new series series box sets. I think it looks stylish and very cool indeed. I absolutely love the colour palette that has been applied over the top as well. These different shades of blue around the sides of the crystals, along with that darker blue in the very middle of the vortex, nicely reflecting on of course the TARDIS exterior box. Really lovely piece and a great unique design for this box set. Packaging for the complete season box sets continues to be that of a high quality cardboard and makes it feel like a purchase that is worth buying because it actually feels high quality and nice in its design as opposed to some of those new series box sets that have been released over the past few years that don't feel like high quality. They feel like very cheap cardboard and is the main reason why I've kind of made the jump to steelbooks as opposed to your standard Blu-ray or DVD releases simply because they don't really feel very nice to hold. So as per usual, we have on one side of the box the many different disc trays containing the stories for this box set. So with all of these box sets behind the final bonus disc there is also Tom Baker staring away within the time vortex looking back at you thinking you've worked through every single one of these discs literally within a week having watched all of the episodes and the special features you said said human being. But yes it's a very nice feature and once again nice consistency compared to the previous box sets. However due to these being glued in simply by four dots I have heard again some of the trays do tend to either be disconnecting entirely or even being glued in too far towards the side meaning that it is very hard to flick through them. So yeah mine thankfully is okay however it is a shame that some box sets are still suffering from that problem and it would be nice to see that rectified on upcoming releases. And then of course on the inside of the lid we have yet another piece of artwork this time round from the face of evil with of course the booklet housed inside. Very much like the back artwork for the complete season box set, the Face of Evil artwork features a very similar style, where we have classic season Doctor Who almost plummeted into the CGI of the 21st century, as we have lots of different elements that you wouldn't expect to see with an actual classic series Doctor Who on transmission, including a rather brilliant looking sunset up above and a planet in the sky, really making the overall landscape look very alien and natural. We do also have, of course, as per usual, the Barry Newbrute 
TARDIS exterior in the very middle, wonderfully recreated by Jonathan Pickard, as well as, of course, the windows that have been nicely coloured this time round, with, of course, the relevant signage for this era. We have the fourth Doctor at the side of the box, rather unusually this time round, not wearing his scarf, and, of course, in the background, you do also have Leela holding her crossbow, and, of course, the different alien shrubbery that you come to expect on the planet of the Sever team. And another really nice little feature is the inclusion of the fourth Doctor in, of course, the rock face there, very much like as seen from one of the cliffhangers from the Face of Evil. So overall, a really lovely artwork and a great way to set off this story in 21st century style. This does, of course, act as a holding place for the leaflet for this season. So just opening it up, we do have this rather small piece of Velcro keeping it together to reveal a great artwork of the Deadly Assassin in the middle, which we'll be coming on to in a second because it is also the cover art for the booklet, which is in fact rather bulky this time round. And then, of course, following the style of this series, we have, of course, the TARDIS console room relevant to that era in the very middle, which this time round is the secondary TARDIS console room, a rather wooden and gothic TARDIS console room with a very unique and niche TARDIS console, looking very unusual compared to all the others. One of my personal favourite TARDIS console rooms of all time, although I'm aware that not many people like it, from my understand. It's one of those ones that's very Marmite. You either like it or you hate it. The booklet for Complete Season 14 does feel ever so slightly bulkier compared to the other Complete Seasons that have been released, and does, as per usual, feature booklet text from Peter McTie. A great accompaniment to the season, especially when watching the special features and watching the episodes, you can get a great bit of context as to the description of the story, a brief synopsis, how the episode was recorded behind the scenes, its production, as well as how it was received as well. It's a great overall perspective, I suppose, of this era within Doctor Who. Of course, the cover art is themed around the Deadly Assassin. We have the fourth Doctor in his Gallifreyan robes. I would have loved to see a figure of that at some point. Who knows? Maybe with these B&M sets, you might get to see something like it at some point. I think it would sell rather well, to say the least. And then, of course, you have these crystals almost coming from the Eye of Harmony here in the very middle, dealing a few Easter eggs from this season, including, of course, Leela, Elizabeth Slade, and Sarah Jane Smith. We have Zoanan there as well, along with Lai Hens Chang, and of course the Master in there, along with of course the podium where the Doctor and the Master do fight at the very end of the Deadly Assassin. As for the rest of the booklet, I'm not going to look at it page by page, you can figure all of that out for yourself, as well as of course read it in your own time if you decide to purchase this release. However, it is a really great way and a great guide to the different special features. It nicely lists all the different components on each disc and what you can expect, and a brief description of what each special feature is, as well as featuring, of course, a few pieces of artwork, which I will give a few teasers to now. Including the Master from the Deadly Assassin, the brilliantly helpful Vok Robots, and a gorgeous sewer-themed artwork from the Talongs of Wang Chiang. And of course the booklet does finish off with some credits to some of the brilliant people that have worked on this box set, a few of which I have mentioned already, and an additional mention as well to Gavin Rymill, who does in fact create the CGI for the disc menu sequences on these releases, and once again this time round created a wonderful CGI recreation of the secondary TARDIS console room, which is a wonderful introduction to each individual disc on this set. Of course, Season 14 is accompanied by your standard production behind-the-scenes material that you would come to expect, including making of documentaries for all six episodes within this season, and admittedly, some are more exciting than others. For example, documentaries for The Robots of Death, The Deadly Assassin, and The Tollings of Wang Chiang, in my opinion, are much more exciting compared to documentaries for, say, the Face of Evil and the Mask of Mandragora. I think the popularity of the episode is a very good determination of how exciting the behind the scenes are, especially when it comes to the making of documentaries. However, of course, it is still nice to see that there are documentaries for all of the stories. We have, of course, interviews of people behind the scenes and the production, if they were part of visual effects, how they managed to create some of the elements and components utilised throughout that serial. Interviews of, of course, the cast as well, including on some occasions Tom Baker, I do believe within the Robots of Death, and of course Louise Jameson within the Face of Evil, discussing
discussing her introduction for that Doctor Who, as well as some interesting interviews on the tongues of Wang Chiang. That is by far the definite highlight for the behind the scenes making of documentaries for me, because it features interviews with Christopher Benjamin and Trevor Baxter, which sadly, now Trevor is no longer with us, I treasure that documentary very, very much, because it is one of the only, from my understand, visual documentations of him talking about Doctor Who. Behind the Sofa does once again make a return for this set, including Louise Jameson, Tom Baker and Philip Hinchcliffe on one couch, as well as Peter Purvis and Sophie Aldred on the other. It's one of those things where if you like Behind the Sofa, then you will love these inclusions on this set. Once again, there is an episode for each individual story. However, if you're not a fan of this series, then I just don't recommend watching it. Of course, it is a brand new feature for these box sets. It can be entertaining, but it does depend entirely on who is on the couch, really, and if you like them personally. I think that this set does feature some nice behind the scenes. However, again, some of the episodes are more exciting than others. For example, I loved the spark of excitement that Tom had when watching the Talongs of Wang Chiang. You could definitely notice what episodes he looks back on more fondly due to how much he kind of talks throughout the behind the sofa sequences, which I thought was quite interesting. But overall, of course, some nice consistent features reflected on these discs as per usual and as always. Season 14 does open with The Mask of Mandragora, written by Louis Marx. As per usual, this episode does feature all your standard behind the scenes that you would come to expect. This disc does in fact merely feature some TV archive material, including some clips from Nationwide, as well as of course the audio archive of the Doctor Who audio story The Pescatons, which was originally released on vinyl back in 1976, which if you haven't experienced that episode before, then that's a great opportunity to. Of course, it's available on this set within in two parts. There is also your usual photo gallery, a comedy short, some PDF material, and the behind the scenes now and then for Port Merion, which is in fact the location used for the Italy backdrop for this story. The audio and TV archive material does continue onto the second disc of this set, which is of course The Hand of Fear, as written by Bob Baker and Dave Martin, which does famously see the departure of Sarah Jane from Doctor Who. There is archive material from Swap Shop, including Tom Baker and Elizabeth Sladen, alongside Noel Edmonds, as well as an audio production known as Exploration Earth. The main highlight on this disc for pretty much everybody who has purchased this product is of course the Elizabeth Sladen. Sladen Tribute, a brilliant documentary, a brand new 2020 production featuring interviews of people who knew Elizabeth Sladen, including Louise Jameson, Tom Baker, a interview with David Tennant, which I do believe was also released on the 2009 special Steelbook, including of course her daughter Sadie Miller. I think it is a wonderful piece, a great depiction of Elizabeth Sladen's life from start to finish, as well as of course a few interviews of people who knew her from Sarah Jane Adventures, so it does go very much up until the very end ending days of her time on Doctor Who. It is a very heartfelt piece and it is a wonderful watch and by far one of the best Doctor Who documentaries that have ever been created and everybody behind it who created it should be very very proud because it is brilliant. Hopefully at some point it will be recognised and given an award because it definitely deserves one. There are some wonderful highlights throughout this including David Tennant talking about Elizabeth Slade and Anne's relationship with her whilst filming School Reunion as well as a few of his cameos throughout Sarah Jane Adventures as well as a brilliant interview with Tom Baker reflecting on his time with Elizabeth Sladen during the production of the show and some moments with him that quite frankly I never thought we would see captured on video. I think we get to see a rather emotional side to Tom and something of which that I have never seen before. It's very rare, it's very as I say heartfelt and it's unique in every way and I highly recommend this set alone simply for this documentary. For the third story of season 14, Tom Baker is of course travelling alone in the fan favourite Doctor Who episode, The Deadly Assassin. It is great to see this episode have 5.1 surround sound, it kind of adds a 21st century twist again on this episode. We do also have a few unique features on this disc as well, some definite highlights include the Dressing Doctor Who documentary with James Atchison, who did in fact design a number of the different costumes throughout this era, including the very iconic Time Lord costume that has been now 
seen throughout Doctor Who history and definitely made a rather large impact. One of my personal favourite features on this disc, although a very small featurette, is in fact the Gallifrey Candidate and this follows a very similar style to that of the documentaries on the State of Decay season 18 disc where we had the impact of certain things within the media and how they are represented. In the case of the State of Decay, it was discussing the way that vampires are depicted within the media. This time round we have a documentary called The Gallifrey Candidate which discusses the parallels between the Manchurian Candidate and the Deadly Assassin and the general theme of politics, corruption and political assassinations. It's very intriguing especially if you are a fan of history and a nice watch as I say it's very unique and something that is a highlight for this disc for me. There's also a few other features including The Frightened Factor which talks about Doctor Who and how scary it is. The reign of Mary Whitehouse having a few criticisms of Doctor Who of this period especially with one of the cliffhangers throughout this story so overall a nice disc and it's great to revisit this episode within the blu-ray format as it would any time i think the deadly assassin is one of those stories that never gets old because it is so brilliant and unique and experimental especially for this period within doctor who history Next up we have The Face of Evil which does of course show the debut of Louise Jameson as Leela and as a result quite a lot of the special features for this disc are in fact themed around Louise Jameson. We have a documentary called Girls 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 featuring Caroline John who did of course portray Liz Shaw as well as Katie Manning who did portray Joe Grant discussing their time on Doctor Who and being female companions and talking about feminism within the classic series and it's in fact a rather nice watch and it's great to see an interview with Caroline John. I don't think I've ever seen one up until this point and no doubt those of you that have got the original DVD have probably seen it many times before. It's also for those of you that are fans of behind the scenes some great opportunities to see some film trims on this disc both edited and unedited so there is a feature taking a look at the highlights and some of the more important moments from the film trims from this story and there is also the unedited 42 minute version of the film trims which is a unique take on Doctor Who. I think it shows the atmosphere of Doctor Doctor Who on the studio floor at the time which is something that you don't really see too much of so it is a nice little feature to include on this box set and as I say if you are a fan of classic production of TV shows then that is definitely a feature that you will no doubt enjoy. Following on from the face of evil with please do not throw hands at me, it is of course the one and only The Robots of Death, which for those of you that haven't watched this episode, you've probably got no idea what that reference is. No, I'm not going mad, I promise, or at least not madder than I already am. So yeah, this episode is another one of these stories that is highly acclaimed by fans, and for good reason, it is an absolutely brilliant watch and a highly entertaining story with some brilliant characters, most notably D84, who is the companion who never was, but most definitely should have been. This disc does feature some of the usual content that you would come to expect. Some of the unique features include some additional commentaries as well as some model footage of the sand miner going across the alien landscape which I must admit for the 1970s is in fact rather effective. There is also studio sound swap shop from the TV archive and of course serial thrillers a documentary with Philip Hinchcliffe talking about the darker and gothic horror aspects of his era which is a great watch especially if you are a fan of this period within Doctor Who history and to finish off there is also some footage from the Panopticon archive which does seem to be a reoccurring theme throughout these sets. The adventures of season 14 conclude with the Talongs of Weng Chiang. This episode is in fact separated across two discs because the episode is simply that good. Starting off with disc 6 we have the actual story itself with of course the option to have the updated special features. The most notable updated special feature of this episode is of course the giant rat which is very effective and brilliant and again adds a believable aspect to this story which I imagine that a few people would have had that belief suspended having watched the original transmission version. There is also some subtle changes throughout this episode including the green glow from Li Hen's Chang's eyes which I think is very effective and again a very subtle change which I did really appreciate as well as the laser beams coming from the giant dragon at the very ending climax of this story and of course the time distillation chamber as well. So I think that this is one of those stories that did definitely benefit a lot from the additional CGI and it is a great feature I just absolutely adored it. 
it and of course if you aren't a fan of updated CGI you do have the option to watch this episode without it added in much like how it did air originally back in 1976. There is also a location report talking about the various scenes throughout this story that were recreated to look like Victorian London as well as some TV archive material from Pebble Mill as well as now and then taking a look at the locations throughout London from this story. Palongs of Wang Chiang continues on to disc 7 with of course Mr Sin nicely depicted there on the front. This time round this disc does in fact focus on the Doctor Who documentary Who's Doctor Who? That was too much Doctor Who within one sentence. So Who's Doctor Who was the first ever Doctor Who documentary to air back in the 1970s and was pretty much the framework for every single behind the scenes documentary that is to come. I think that Toby Haydock rather brilliantly described it as the grandfather almost of Doctor Who conversation. Credential. So that did of course air back in 1976, I do believe after the airing of the Tongs of Wang Chiang on BBC Two. And then rather brilliantly and in true Doctor Who style, there is also a documentary of the documentary called Who's Doctor Who Revisited? This is getting rather complex now, which is once again Toby Haydock, a 2020 production, looking back on that documentary and its impact and how it affected the Doctor Who audience, as well as revisiting some of the people that featured within that documentary, including some of the children that were featured in the school as well as the person behind the documentary itself. An eye-opening piece, thoroughly enjoyable and again one of the highlights of this set. There is also some smaller featurettes on this disc, including some studio footage, some archive material from Blue Peter as they attempt to recreate the New Palace Theatre, which is an entertaining watch to say the least, with them heavily relying on lots of glue and lots of bits of corrugated cardboard in true Blue Peter style. There is also, moving on, a brief chat with Philip Hinchcliffe about his unexpected departure from Doctor Who, a brand new interview with Deep Roy discussing his time on Doctor Who very briefly as well as a number of his different appearances from many other parts of sci-fi including Star Trek Star Wars as well as of course Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in there as well which was in fact an unexpected really enjoyable watch. I enjoyed taking a look at Deep Roy's career in a rather small yet effective interview. There is also some historical featurettes and of course some PDF material on there as well. And of course, to conclude, Season 14 finishes with the bonus disc, nicely depicted once again using the Barry Newbury TARDIS prop. This time round, we have Matthew Sweet returning in conversation with Philip Hinchcliffe, a over one hour interview with Philip Hinchcliffe discussing his time on Doctor Who, as well as, of course, the previous seasons, Season 13 and Season 12, and discussing his aims throughout the show, and basically him acknowledging how the Philip Hinchcliffe era of Doctor Who wouldn't have been the same with without Robert Holmes, very much like how Robert Holmes stories wouldn't have been the same without Philip Hinchcliffe and him discussing about how it was very much a team effort at the time, a very intriguing documentary and a nice insight into Doctor Who production. There is also Life After Whom with Philip Hinchcliffe once again and his daughter and I'm talking about his time within the show as well as what he went on to do after that. There is also Call My Bluff, the Dennis Fisher toy adverts which as a Doctor Who collector myself it was great to see once again that small part of Doctor Who history, merchandising history, some of the first ever main Doctor Who action figures, whether you like them or hate them. There is also the Season 14 Blu-ray trailer, which is also available on the official Doctor Who YouTube channel, as well as to finish off an interview between Tom Baker and Philip Hinchcliffe, which is also seen on the Talongs of Wang Chiang documentary on Disc 6. However, this time round is the unedited extended version with a few additional pieces of footage. And that does of course conclude all of the special features and bonus material on Doctor Who Season 14. And with that, that does of course conclude yet another Doctor Who The Collection Complete Blu-ray Box Set Review, this time round of Doctor Who Season 14, featuring Tom Baker, Elizabeth Sladen and Louise Jameson. Overall, a gorgeous box set and one that is a welcome addition to the collection that no doubt many people have been after for a long time. Of course, Season 14 is one of the most popular seasons within the show's history, featuring brilliant stories, the likes of The Deadly Assassin, The Robots of 
Death and the Talons of Wang Chiang. And I think that this box set definitely does those stories justice, being packed with special features and bonus material. As for the physical box set itself, this product fails to disappoint. We have some gorgeous artwork from Lee Binding, both on the actual cover art itself, the back of the box, as well as being extended to the inside of the packaging, including that gorgeous Planet of Evil landscape, and of course the individual artwork within the booklet itself, as well as the individual discs. Everything about these box sets basically is packed to the brim with consistency, a beautiful design, and more importantly, dedication from absolutely everybody that has been involved within the production of these sets, and it's something of which that I do definitely recommend if you are a fan of the era. And surprisingly, as I mentioned in all of the reviews throughout this series, binge-watching classic series Doctor Who is in fact a lot easier than it sounds. There is surprisingly quite a lot of links between the different stories if you watch them in order, and had these box sets not been released, I wouldn't have even really considered watching classic series Doctor Who in order, which sounds very, very odd, but there's just something about the series which, to me, because of them having these individual serials and classic series Doctor Who not necessarily being known for its plot arcs, I've never really considered it in the past. However, these box sets aid that experience. As a result, I definitely recommend purchasing them if you have the money. And that is, of course, one of the main problems that this series does, of course, face. The price. The recommended retail is £40, which is a really generous price. I think, honestly, for the content that you get, it is worth the money. However, it is the case of if you can actually purchase it for that recommended retail price. At the current time of filming, this box set does seem to be sold out from the vast majority of retailers, including HMV, Zoom, and Amazon. Therefore, if you haven't purchased this box set as of yet, I definitely wish you look in doing so in the future however of course this box set is going to be highly fought after regardless and yeah it's a shame but however it happens and I just hope that in the future perhaps they make more as a part of their production run and maybe more people will be able to get it and hopefully less people will be buying it just to sell on eBay at extensive prices but let's face it it always happens it always will and it's one of those things that we can't really avoid so thank you for watching this review. I hope you have enjoyed it. What is your general opinion of this season? I'm very interested to know. Why not leave a comment in the comment section below? I am in fact contemplating reviewing each individual episode from this season in an episode review format. If you would like to see that, or maybe even see other classic series Doctor Who episode reviews, definitely show support of that again within the comment section below. As at the minute, especially during the summer, it is something that I'm considering doing over the next few months. So thank you very much watching hope you've enjoyed the review and i shall see you all next time bye for now